The Veer Report Guide. The bad, the good, the unusual. The pros and cons from a programming point of view. I'm not going to cover this from a hardware point of view. From a hardware point of view, the pros is about a kilometer long. And the cons, not very big at all. But from a programming perspective, the pros are faster extending sequential access. It's important to notice that it has to be sequential and it has to be ascending. If you move up through RAM, ports are glorious. Auto increment, you don't have to do an INX or an INC or a compare, it just works. The other pro is it can be abused for a lot of other things. The cons, however, random access is very poor because now you have to go through and set the entire address space to the port and then read and then set it up all again and then read. So before we could just use an index and jump around within 256 very easily, you can't anymore. You still have to modify things directly. Descending access is now as costly as random. There is no acceleration or benefits for descending and you're in now a random case. It's a shared resource. This doesn't sound like it is an issue, but when you get into a game type context and your main thread is plotting a new column on your scroller and then the interrupt fires and then your interrupt update sprites, they both have to use the ports and they're gonna change the values. So your column starts drawing, gets halfway through, the sprites come in, shift all the addresses to somewhere else, your interrupt exits, and then your column code continues plotting and trashes random data off of the sprites. So it's something you have to be aware of. It's something you have to plan. Either you make it so resources are locked from each other so they will not trash each other and you just perfectly time it so it never happens, or you put in a bunch of save and restore state code where needed. Either way, it can buy too hard. And also you have a high penalty for context switching. So like before with the interrupt example, you have to do a lot of saving and restoring of data when you want to switch. So whereas in a shared memory model, COM64 for example, you can easily update the screen, update see RAM and then update sprites. There is no real benefit to doing either of those in any particular order or in any particular way. Whereas with ports, you have to batch. With these, of course, I've factored in that the Vera has two ports and has a range of increments. Without two ports or with only a single ink, the cons get much higher. The basics. How do you use the port? First of all, you have to select the actual port you want. You should always make sure you are currently on the port you expect to be. That can be a fun bug to track down. You set the address and the increment register. Here I've done it in low upper word bank. The order I don't believe is important for this particular machine. And then you need to set yourself up a source somehow, whether you do this via indirect or if you just do it by an absolute, depends on your data and how much you have. But this code here is copy X number of pages to somewhere in VRAM. If you just want to update the text or color, you can set the increment to two, and this will skip the other value you didn't want to change. If you get into a read, write, modify situation, such as for example, you want to change all the background color for a fade or something, or you just want to update the foreground color, but leave the background color the same, you need to set both ports to the same address. And then you can read from one, end mask, all value, and then store. And because both ports have the same increment, either one or two, depending on what you're doing, and they're pointed to the same location, you kind of march together. This is a case where having two ports really does help. Another common thing you want to do is write a column, either text or tiles, because you're in a scrolling game example. The high level of this is you need to set port zero to be your screen or map base, 
plus x times 2. Then you want to set port 1 to be base of plus x times 2 plus 1. So you can write the word value. You want to set your auto advancement to the screen width. You know, you've got a 32, or 64, or 128, 256 tile map width, not the actual visible screen width, so not 40 or 80, but the stride, as it may be called, of the actual map inside VRAM. And then you write your text or tile low to port 0, and then your color info or tile high to port 1. So this is basically the code. It may be a bit difficult to read unless you're in the higher quality settings. I've recorded at 720, so it should be fine at 720, but you may need 1080 depending on the encoding YouTube chose. I've made a function to handle converting the screen width to the actual number Vera requires. You could easily just use a bunch of constants though. So first of all, we make sure we have port zero selected. I load the X offset. I times it by two. This code is only safe for zero to 128 widths. If you have 256 wide, you will need to extend this to a nine bit addition. So I add this low of screen base. Chances are for you this will be zero, so you can skip the CLC and ADC. And I store it to the low address. I then push it on the stack because we'll need it again shortly. I then load the high of the screen base, set it. I then load the bank of the screen base, and I set the increment. I then switch to the other port. I then save the bank and increment address value. I then set the high value of the port, and then I pulled the low byte off the stack from what we calculated before, add one to it, and then save it. And from there, you just copy data from your column buffer. I suggest splitting it into a low high set so it's much easier to read in. Fairly straightforward. The unusual. Two more indexes. So if you have some data that you just wish to stream in, i.e. it would be something you read and then do an INY and INX for, you could put it into the Vera's VRAM, either directly or via a VLOAD command, and then you can set the ports, and then just read from the ports, freeing up indexes. Another use, great use case for this would be uncompressing data. Typically, you have a get next byte function, which could be replaced with just read from the port in Vera it would greatly speed it up. Another use case is using it as a 256 byte LUT. So you set the upper bits in the port address, and then you can store the lower eight bits and then read from the port. The benefit of this is you can do this operation with the A, the X or the Y register, and you don't need to use or trash any of the other indexes to achieve it. You just write the value, and then the Vera hardware does the indexing lookup for you, and you read from the port. The other benefit of this is you can just shift the page that the Vera registers point to in order to change the conversion operation. Say you're doing something that needs to shift data across. You can make it point to shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five, and you don't have to make any modifications to the actual code, you just change the address that the VIR is pointing to. And that's basically it. That's your main pros and cons.